So today again we are working on the double fan solution that we had two videos ago. So somebody suggested in the comments actually talking about this bit axe mount that you can sometimes get from Decentral Tech or there's other vendors out there that also sell it. And they were saying that's a perfect mount for the fan to go on in the double fan solution there. The only thing is we need to actually fit it in because if we hold this there and look through there's not really much to attach it to. It doesn't, you can't drill through these back parts here because it doesn't even fit by there. So our solution is just a piece of plastic. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna drill a hole in these pieces of plastic, only two of them because we can just put it one side and one side there, diagonally. And then we're gonna put a mini screw through all of this. So through there and then through there and that should attach it to the back of this. And then we should be able to, because I've seen comments and basically this is allowed. I mean, there's no permission for it, but it is allowed in terms of the voltage, but we are pulling a lot of watts more through. And it's also gonna run at half the speed for both of them. I believe that's what they were saying. So we might need to automatic fan control up to 100%, which would be 50% of both of them. I don't really get how that was explained, to be honest, in the comments, but apparently you're allowed to do it. And we're gonna put this on, so we're gonna put this through, attach it on, then we're gonna take the gamma off of the rig and put it in here, and then we're gonna do some tests and hopefully benchmark it. Hopefully get some better results as well in terms of the fan blowing through, just because we're not holding it at a weird angle and it's actually at a steady place. So this is going to come through the back, so we're going to have it there. And then this is going to go into the bit axe, which will be here. So let's drill some holes into these and let's get the gamma off the rig. And then we'll see kind of what we end up with. So a couple of problems that we have with this that we're just going to have to make edits to is that this doesn't fit fully flush to the back because there's obviously those heat sinks in the way, which we're trying to actually cool down. And so we can't actually access the power supply. So we're gonna to have to cut just that little bit off there, which is fine. And then for the mounting solution that we're looking at, we can take this out here. We've just put basically a hole through these and we're gonna then put this through here, if you can see, and basically sort out where the placement is gonna be. We only need to put two of these in because I'm not really too worried about the placement, but it's going to be directly on the voltage regulator, maybe, or it might be a little bit above that. So off centered so the air can flow through here and actually cool the heat sinks. And then we also have an option to kind of angle it this way if we want to possibly hit the heat sink and the ASIC chip at the same time. But we'll look kind of into that maybe later on after we've kind of set it up. And then we'll see if we can make an angle here just so we can have it running in the background and flowing all the way up through the honeycomb. So we're just going to cut this out. Firstly, we're going to cut that out and then we're going to find the placement and put that in. And then we'll kind of run it and see how it is, benchmark it. And then we'll think about putting it at an angle. We'll see what we can do with that. So let's get on and do that. So as you can see there, we have the full mount. We have the double fans plugged in. This is our first fan, which is plugged into the four pin. And then this is our second fan, which is plugged into the three pin. And I've been told that that still has fan control on it. But if you look here, let's just try to be careful because it might fall out. We've also cut that off and then the backs are mounted here. And if we just carefully lift this up, you can kind of see that the fan is covering the heatsink down in there. I don't know if you can see it, but the fan is covering that. And we might need to make some adjustments to the plastic at the back just because it's way too big. And I think it will get in the way of some of the heat dissipation as well. So if we pull it out here, you can see kind of where it's placed. It also is perfect at the moment because the heatsink is allowing us to have a little bit of space. And without that, I think that we would be risking putting some of the screws for the fans 
onto the actual board, which would heat up as well. So it's kind of perfect. And now all we need to do is actually plug it in and see if it runs. And then we're going to get it up onto the computer and benchmark it for a full benchmark test. I know last time we actually just started it at 750, but we're going to do an automatic fan control test. And then we're going to do a 100% fan control test because I obviously don't know how these fans work and we need to keep an eye on the voltage. So if it's not pulling enough in terms of cooling it down, this will also add heat. At least this mount that we have here is going to add a little bit of residual heat to the board and to anything underneath it or below it. But it should blow out some of the air from this fan in the back and keep everything cooler overall. So let's get it plugged in and we'll show you if it turns on. So here's the moment of truth. If we can just plug that in there. And it looks like both of them are running if we look here. So we have that one intaking air into it, the same with the black one on the front here. The reason that we're not using the Nocta ones is because we actually don't have a four pin Nocta floating around. We've kind of used them on all the other upgrades, but you can see this running right now. And let's get it over to the computer and let's start uh, actual overclocking and benchmarking. So as you can see here, this is just our kind of standard run up on whatever overclocks we were using last. And we're sitting at 49 degrees on the ASIC temperature and 40 on the voltage regulator temperature. So definitely cooler on that side. I am thinking we should maybe angle it just because it would be better for the heat dissipation on both the ASIC and the voltage regulator. Voltage input is 5.1. I know we are struggling with voltage problems previously, but we'll kind of go through that on the overclocking part or at least the benchmarking part. So let's run this up here. As you can see, 192. So we actually need to get rid of all this because we need to go into the benchmark part of it. So this is what I normally do is I take whatever we have here which is CD bit axe hash rate. I know there's quicker ways to do this and have it just open up when you want to, but this is the way that I do it. And then we take this and input that there. And then, and I think we're just gonna start off from whatever they choose as the lowest ones. Also, somebody in the comments wanted to know how you edit kind of the overclocking frequency variances. And I'll show you how to do that now. So you go to windows and then you scroll down and you're looking for system or system 32. And then you want to scroll down until you find the bit ax hash rate benchmark. And then you're looking for the PI benchmark right here. So this is the Python script. If we right click and hit edit with idle, it's going to open up kind of the parameters in here. So you can set them yourself in this configuration part. Make sure you save it obviously. So you can have voltage increments, frequency increments. So you can do this one by, by one each time. You have max temperature, which is 67 currently, and max VR temperature, which is 94, which we set ourselves. Max power is 35. I have heard that the actual watts that you pull on the bit axis is only for the actual chip. Now, correct me if I'm wrong in the comments, but that doesn't include the power supplied to the fans or anything else on there, including the LCD. So I don't know if we're actually pulling more watts than the stated watts just for the chip and the fans are extra after that. But you guys can let me know in the comments, but that's how you edit it. So we have our max temp at 67, max VR temp is 94, which I don't think we're gonna hit over. And then voltage increments, these are just the standard ones. You can change the benchmark time, the sample intervals, and the max allowed voltage and frequency. So we might bump this up maybe to, I don't know, 950 if we can get up there. And then you just click file and save, and it should save it all right there. As soon as you've done that, you can go in and click enter. And that should start running right there. So you can see volt core voltage, frequency, and then applying settings here. So we'll let that run and then we'll come back when we kind of see any results from it or if the voltage is going too low at some point. So we are currently benchmarking it still and we were having this problem when we first plugged in the dual fans and that was the voltage regulator or at least the input voltage. 
And when we're looking at the results here, you can see it drops from 5,070, so this is kind of normal range. And it keeps dropping if we keep going down. We're currently at 4,992. Now, I don't see a problem with that, but I believe that the voltage is going to keep dropping as we keep overclocking it. And the voltage regulator is not going to be able to actually regulate that because we have two fans plugged in currently with basically four times the wire length on the fans because we have one wire going into the fan and then that goes into the connector and then the connector splits into another fan and then you have the wire length of that other fan. So whereas you would have had one wire length, you now have four wires length of current flowing through something. And that's leading me to believe that that's why we're going to see voltage dropping as we continue because I can take it up normally to higher overclocks than this without the voltage dropping as much or quite as rapidly as you're seeing here. So we started off at 5.1 and then it's dropped all the way down to 4992 and I'm sure it'll update in a minute. So from what I understand, I'm no electrical genius by any means, but voltage drops because you're requiring more current to flow through things. And that's why I'm assuming that the fans are pulling more, which means that the voltage is dropping quicker because of this fan speed regulator. So when we're on settings and we go down to automatic fan control, this is normally the automatic fan control, which keeps the ASIC chip at optimum temperatures. And I've seen in the comments that it's going to pull it for whatever the optimum temperature is only on one of the fans and it's just going to default the other one to whatever RPM that one is. So in theory, you're pulling 5000 RPM on one of them. It's going to default the other one to 5000 RPM as well. However, this doesn't really work because we're also cooling the back at the same time. So I don't think it can regulate it properly because it's speeding it up and slowing it down quite rapidly. I can even hear it within the fans. So my next solution is going to be an automatic fan control, which we're going to do now. I can see here currently we're at 6,000 RPM, so 49%. I'm going to do a little experiment where we're going to take it down to 30% and see kind of what the temperatures go up to whilst we're doing this. So even on here, let's take it down to, I don't know, 35. Let's save that. I don't know if it saves it instantly. It might do. But then let's go back to the dashboard and see kind of if the temperature starts to climb and if the voltage actually drops on here because I'm expecting to see the voltage drop because we're pulling less through the fans. But as you can see here, the ASIC temperature is climbing up. The voltage regulated temperature isn't climbing as much, but the ASIC temperature is. I can't get a full reading on the input voltage because we need to wait for this to update to give us the actual voltage. But I'm assuming if we have done that there, that's going to allow us to have more headroom for the voltage and we can let the temperature rise a little bit more for the chip. I'm saying around 50 to 60. So we're going to keep it kind of 60 as the top range, 61, 62. But the voltage regulator temperature, we can definitely let that ride up because that was the main thing that was stopping our overclocking last time was the voltage regulator temperature and the ASIC chip was sitting at around 55, whilst the voltage regulator temperature was sitting at 94. So the main reason for the double fans is to kind of get rid of that. But we might actually have to add or angle it towards the chip instead and flow air through the voltage regulator heat sinks. Because right now we're having the exact opposite of the reason that we're using the double fans, and that is that the ASIC temperature is going too high and the voltage regulator temperature looks to be way too low in my opinion compared to the other one so that's what we're going to do we're going to try angle it and see if we can get a better temperature on the chip and the voltage regulator we're going to let that run a little bit higher just to see if we can get this to overclock a little bit better without kind of losing the voltage that we see here i know we have kind of a headroom of 4900 anything kind of below that i wouldn't want to go below it from doing some research, you should allow around 3%. That's the fluctuation between what the actual voltage should be. But anything under that, I think, is kind of a bit dangerous. So 3% currently at 5 volts would be 4850. But just to keep on the safe side, 
the voltage that we're looking for is 4,900. That's the lowest we'll go. So I'm going to try set up an angle on this fan and then we'll get back and we'll test out some overclocks or benchmark it. So after trading this around or changing it around, I guess, we have got like a slight angle on there. So we haven't attached it through fully. So you can see that's going to be blowing on the back of the chip and and the air is going to be flowing through the voltage regulator heat sinks. Just like we see here, just because on the back, think of it as the back end, there's also heat sinks like copper ones here. And that's going to take air away from them if we have it at this angle. So now we're going to just have to kind of benchmark it, play around with some of the automatic fan controls to make sure that we get kind of the right voltage pulling through it and don't undervolt the device too much. So after overclocking, or at least putting it at an angle that you saw there, we now kind of got to the lowest voltage input or input voltage down here, 4914. I didn't really want to let it run past that because you can damage it if you don't have it at around five volts. And we couldn't really push it past 725. Normally with one fan, we can push it up to 850. I think, and then we can push it further. But the whole point of the fan was to get the VR temperatures down because we hit the VR temperatures way quicker than we did the ASIC chip temperatures. So these were kind of even if we scroll up here. So 58, 58, that angle is kind of perfect for keeping them at the same temperature. I don't know if that's good or not. But we came out highest hash rate that we hit was 1480 and that was at 700 and 115. Efficiency was actually pretty good as well. If we go down to most efficient, you have 14.31 and that was at 650. So as I said, leave it in the comments. Maybe I'm doing something wrong or maybe as I've already seen in other comments, we might just have to power the fan through a different power source just because I don't think it can handle it doing it through there currently. And we will be looking into getting a new power supply so we can actually run all of the bit axes at the same time. But I think if we look here, highest giga hash that we hit is 1817. Is there anything higher than that? It doesn't look like there is. So 1836 is registered there. So kind of getting into that 1.8 range slightly, I guess, with kind of an average hash rate that you're seeing here at around 1.4 is the average apparently. And the temperatures got up to 60.625 right there at the top of the overclocking at 1.82 or 1.84 back here. So as I said, let me know in the comments kind of what you think we should do with this. And I do have a couple of videos in the pipeline for water cooling. So you should be seeing that in a couple of days, depending on when we're recording it. If you wanted to get any of the stuff that we use in the video, I've just started the Amazon affiliate and it doesn't cost you anything. Just there is links in the description. So if you use them, there's commission paid, but it doesn't cost you anything to actually click the link in the first place. So if you want to help out the channel, maybe order some stuff through there. It's mainly heat sinks, fans, and a bunch of other stuff that are included kind of within the bit axe. So, hope you guys enjoyed. Make sure you like the video and subscribe for more content like this.